Hey everyone, welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a tutorial for a pattern from Sewn Ideas. Now this is the first time I've ever worked with Sewn Ideas. Vivi reached out to me asking if I would consider doing a tutorial for the slim dog walking bag pattern, which I'm going to show you in just a second. I looked it over. Oh my gosh, it's adorable. I checked out her site. Some of my favorite bags that I see being made on social media come from her patterns. So I am super excited to be doing tutorials for her bag patterns. Thank you so much, Vivi, for reaching out and for sending me this pattern today. So today's bag has a very specific purpose. It's for our dog walking friends. Those of us who have dogs, those of us who know people who have dogs and take them for walks and have to collect the waste, pick up the doo-doo, deposit the discretion, you know, pick up the poop. <laughs> it's not a pretty task. It's not glamorous, but da, 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 this bag is so stinking cute. It's very slim. You see this. It's super, super slim. No gussets, nothing like that. No rounded edges, nothing like that. This is all rectangles. It has a pocket with a zipper on the front right here. And that's where you're going to put your dog waste bags. And then you just pull it out of this grommet and we're going to talk about these grommets coming up in the video, but you just pull it out of here. So it's easy access. You have what you need. You zip up this pocket here. You have a nice slip pocket. She suggests using this as like a treat pocket. You could also put your cell phone on here, whatever you need easy access to quickly. And then on the top, we have a zipper. And then you have a nice big opening on the inside. And she also includes a slip pocket, which we're going to be adjusting just a little bit today for a bigger phone. And then it's just a beautiful crossbody strap. Very basic, but you can do a lot with this, which you know, if you've been here for a while, buildable patterns. Those are my favorite. Beginner friendly patterns that as you gain more experience, more confidence, you can build on to do all kinds of things. So this was the first version I did. Now, let me tell you, this first version was done in all vinyl on the exterior and waterproof canvas on the interior. The strap is waterproof canvas, which I highly, highly suggest. We're going to be doing that in the tutorial today. I waterproof canvas. If you don't already have some in your stash, you need to invest in some. This has a lot of layers, especially right here. You have the front and the back of this pocket. You have the front and the back of the second pocket. You have the front and the back of the main. This is a lot of layers right here. Personally, if you wanted to do some vinyl and you don't have a lot of experience with vinyl, like you vinyl pros out there, you industrial machine people, you know what you're doing. You, you don't need advice from me, but for those of us who are working on domestic machines and aren't so comfortable working with really thick fabrics all the time, if you wanted to add vinyl, maybe just add it to this front portion right here where you have the grommet. So right here and maybe this top strip right here, only there. The rest keep quilt cotton because the vinyl is just so thick. I can tell you that these, I mean, you can see I couldn't even poke out those corners. It was just too thick for me. And my level of experience, this was too difficult. I wouldn't make another one in all vinyl. However, this is actually a bag for my mom who likes to take her dog walking on the beach. And she said, this is absolutely perfect because with the vinyl and the waterproof canvas, no matter if it gets wet, if you get something on it, you can wipe it off. It's super durable. So it's totally up to you. If you want to, you know, venture into vinyl, my first attempt, I did have to unpick this two times to try to get it to end up like this and it could be better. So for my second attempt, I used all quilt cotton. I used my favorite quilt cotton because honestly, I just wanted a bag that's for me. This is my favorite. This is Haunted Mansion style quilt cotton. This is from Backstitch Fabrics. You guys know how much I love them. Anyways, for this one, I actually left off the grommet because I wanted to show you that this doesn't have to be a dog walking bag. This can just be a beautiful, slim crossbody bag. This for me would be a parks bag. Whenever Disney one day opens up again, this is a perfect bag. If you don't have a lot to carry and you just want to get through things quickly, this is a great slim bag, beginner friendly, especially if you go this route, all quilt cotton, you're going to be fine. You're going to be so proud of this. So many cute details. And then the other modification that I did in this bag, which I will be showing you today is I adjusted the top zipper so that we have some zipper tabs to keep this nice and flat. 
we don't have to sew over the zipper when we're sewing the sides together. Okay, so let me show you what this bag looks like on. I got a step stool just so I can show you this. So you can see I'm a big, big crossbody fan. So it goes across the body really nicely. It's nice and slim. It goes against your body. It doesn't poof out. It doesn't hit anything. It's super, super easy, super basic. So I am so excited to walk you through this tutorial today, guys. Like I said, whether you add the grommet or not, totally different uses for these bags. I know that there's a lot of dog lovers out there because I saw what you guys did with the itty bitty boxy bag when you changed that into a dog waste dispenser. Dog, no, that would actually be the dog, right? A dog waste dispenser. The dog waste bag dispenser, there we go. I saw what you guys did with that one, so I know you guys are gonna love this. This is just so useful. A lot of us are taking our dogs for multiple walks a day because there's not a whole lot else to do during the day. So, perfect timing, perfect bag. If you use the discount code JESS25 at checkout, you get 25% off of the pattern. Go to her site, check it out, grab this pattern, grab the makeup pattern, grab whatever other patterns you want. Let me know what you buy so I can kind of figure out what kind of tutorial we should do next. She has a lot of beautiful options. So if you're new to the channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. We have new tutorials coming out every single Monday. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all you want to say, please leave them in the comment section down below. Don't forget at the very top of the comment section will be a comment from me and it will have timestamps for every single step of the video. All you have to do is click on the number and it'll take you straight there in the video. All right, let's get started. So for our material, you're going to need about one yard of outer fabric. Now I'm actually using three different pieces of fabric for my outer fabric. For the main part of the body, which is the front and the back, I will be using this cream color Tula Pink. For the front pocket, I will be using this blue and pink, also from Tula Pink. And for the D-ring holder and the strap, I will be using waterproof canvas. Now I am a huge fan of waterproof canvas for straps especially, you do not need to interface this. You could also use this for the lining, but it will be a little bit more challenging. So if this is your first time making a bag like this, I do suggest sticking to quilt cotton for your lining, but definitely get yourself some waterproof canvas for the strap. From the lining, you're going to need a third of a yard of fabric. I will be using quilt cotton today. Now for the interfacing, I'm actually gonna be using a couple different things. First, I'm gonna be using this Pelon 911FF, which is a fusible featherweight. If you have SF-101, you can also use that. I'm trying to save my SF-101 right now due to the shortage, so I'm gonna be using the featherweight today. And then for the lining for the main body, front and back, I'm gonna actually use a little bit of Decoville Light. Now I haven't tried this before, this is my first time, but Decoville Light offers a structure to the bag that takes it to a professional level. Now, we don't have any of this in the seams of our bag, so I feel very comfortable using the Decoville Light today. You wanna try to keep this out of your seams because it can gunk up your needle. I would suggest about a half yard of each of these. You're gonna need two zippers that are 10 inches or longer. We'll be using three quarter inch hardware today, so two swivel hooks, two D rings, and one slider, all at three quarters of an inch. I get all of my hardware from Emmeline Bags. And then you're going to need a one inch in diameter grommet. Now this can be a little bit tricky. And if you look on Emmeline bags, you'll see they have a three quarter inch grommet that is gorgeous. I did not purchase that because I didn't have time to get it. But instead, you can actually find these Dritz Home Curtain Grommets. Now these are plastic, they're not metal, but they do work really well and they're very sturdy and they're one inches wide, so you don't have to worry about this ripping apart or ripping your fabric whenever you're pulling out the bags. Now, if you're not interested in using this for dog walking or anything like that, you can just totally leave off the grommets and now you're just making a beautiful, slim crossbody bag. To hold all my pieces together today, I'll like always be using clips. My thread today is this Guterman 100% polyester. I really, really love this. I find that I have less skip stitches when I use the polyester thread versus the cotton thread. So if you're doing bags, I do highly suggest using this Guterman thread. My needle today will be a Microtex 8012. I do suggest this size if you're using quilt cotton like I am. If you're gonna be using a lot of vinyl like I did with my first bag, you wanna up your needle to a 9014. For marking the fabric and tracing the pattern pieces, I like to use this air erasing sew line marker. And to help me with feeding the fabric through my machine and any potential mistakes, I have this beautiful stiletto and seam ripper combo. As always, links for all of these will be in the description of the video. 
So now let's walk through the pattern pieces. One thing that I absolutely adore that she does in her pattern is if you look on page four, she has a different colored fabric for every single piece. So while you're following along in the pattern, if you're not quite sure which piece you're working on, every single piece is a totally different color. That made a cute, cute bag, but it's also just so helpful for beginners. So I highly, highly suggest you check out her pattern and make sure when you're looking at it, you look at it on your computer, don't print it in black and white, make sure you see those color differences. Additionally, on page 21 of the pattern, she has a sheet with every single pattern piece with its number and also including its size in centimeters and inches. So if you don't wanna use the pattern pieces, you don't wanna cut them out, you don't wanna trace them, you just wanna use your ruler, you're more than welcome to do that. I will have the measurements covered up with a piece of tape throughout the tutorial, but this is a great option if you just wanna cut all these out, pin them to your fabric so you have everything organized. This, this pattern was organized very, very well. So from the exterior, I'm going to be using this bird cream colored fabric for the front and the back of the bag. You can see here's the pattern piece. It tells you everything you need for it. This pattern piece also includes an interfacing piece. Now this is just a little bit smaller than the fabric. I did cut the featherweight out for this and then I also use the same pattern piece for my Decoville light. So here I have my exterior fabric, a layer of the featherweight and a layer of the Decoville light. I'll be using that same fabric for my zipper tabs. Now this is an adjustment to the pattern that I made. You don't have to do this, but if you'd like to use zipper tabs, you're gonna need two pieces of exterior or lining fabric, each cut at two inches by two inches. From the second exterior fabric, which is going to be the front pocket of the bag, I have pattern piece one, four, and six. Pattern pieces one and four both have additional interfacing cuts, and you're gonna use your SF-101 or your fusible featherweight for these. Pattern piece six does not have any interfacing. And for the last bit of exterior, I have my crossbody strap and my D-ring strap. I am going to be using waterproof canvas for both of these. This does not need to be interfaced if you're using waterproof canvas. However, if you're not, she does give you measurements for how to interface these if you're using quilt cool cotton. From the lining, you're going to need two pieces from pattern piece five. This is the same size as your outer panels. These both need to be interfaced with your SF-101 or your featherweight. You're gonna need pattern pieces number three and two for the pocket for the front of the bag. And then pattern piece number seven can be made from any of your fabrics. This is for that phone slip pocket on the inside of the bag. I'm altering this to fit a larger phone like mine. So the only change I made was I kept the width the same as the pattern, but I changed the height to seven inches. This interior slip pocket is where I'll also be attaching my bag tag. Okay, the pattern starts us off by prepping the D-ring strap. While we're here, let's just go ahead and make our crossbody strap. This will make it much easier in the end to just be done with the bag when we're on the last step. So starting with the D-ring strap, if you're using waterproof canvas, you'll see that there's a matte side and kind of a shiny rubbery side. I have learned that the shiny rubbery side is the back of it. So this matte woven looking side, that's actually the right side. You'll notice too when you're ironing, you can iron the woven side. Do not put your iron on this rubber back. It will just melt onto your iron. Ask me how I know. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is take the longer edges of your D-ring strap and fold up your fabric wrong sides together so those longer edges meet. You can just finger press this here or you can press it with an iron. Open it up and then take each of those longer edges and fold them up to meet that midpoint line that you just made by pressing, so do the top and the bottom that way. There we go. And then just fold this entire unit in half so you have a nice single fold on one side and a double fold on the other. I'm going to use a couple clips to just hold this in place. And there we go. Now before we go to the sewing machine, let's go ahead and prep our crossbody strap as well. So we're gonna do the same thing with our crossbody strap. We're gonna fold it long edges wrong sides together to meet. And again, if you're using quilt cotton here, this is much easier to do with an iron. You can also use an iron here if you're using waterproof canvas like I am, but honestly, this works just as well and it's a little bit faster. Once you have that center crease created, go ahead and take those raw edges and wrong sides together, fold them up to meet that center mark. And as I go, what I'll do is I'll just add clips here and there all the way along the edge. I'm just finger pressing and adding clips. 
Again, you can definitely use an iron here to help with this. Once you have one side pinned down, go ahead and do the same with the opposite edge. Now here, as you go, all you have to do is fold down that edge to meet the other one and then fold them up and include in the pin. So you can just kind of do two steps at once as you go down the strap. If this is too challenging, don't worry about it. Just fold down this long edge and then fold the two folded edges up together. All right, once you have the entire length of your strap done, let's go ahead and close these edges. This just will leave a nice clean finish, and make it much easier to sew. So open up one of your short edges. And what I do is I just fold it in about three eighths of an inch. I'm not even measuring. It's anywhere between a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch, whatever you're comfortable with. Fold down that short edge in just like that. And then you can press this here if you'd like, but then fold it back together with the double folds on the edge, just like this. See, now I have the raw edge tucked in. You can go ahead and adjust it so it lines up and then fold it again with your double fold and your single fold. And you'll see that this edge right here, we don't have any raw seams, nice and pretty. Go ahead and do that for the other side as well. So I'm just going to unclip a few over here, open it up all the way, and then fold it in about 3 eighths of an inch. Give it a good press with your iron or with your fingers, and then refold the raw edges to meet in the middle, just like this, and then fold it again. And this is what I found to be the cleanest way to have your edges without having to worry about raw edges showing in the end or having a really thick mass here. This just cleans it up really nicely. And sewing on waterproof canvas is doable for most machines. So now we're gonna take our strap and our D-ring strap to the sewing machine. On the D-ring strap, we're gonna sew along the double folded edge and the single folded edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. On the purse strap, we're gonna sew along the entire thing at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So we're gonna go over the short ends as well at an eighth of an inch, go all the way down the long ends until we get to the opposite end, go over that short end and continue on until the entire strap is closed in with that eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, we should now have the D-ring strap and the bag strap sewn on the edges. So let's go ahead and prep each one of these for their hardware. Go ahead and grab all your hardware, your D-rings, your swivel hooks, and your slider. The swivel hooks and slider we're gonna use with the strap in just a moment. Let's go ahead and prep these D-rings. What you're gonna wanna do is take your D-ring strap and fold it short edges together. And you can slide your scissor in here and cut it like that if you'd like, or you can open it back up and just cut along that fold. Now take one of your straps and slide it over the D-ring and it's gonna be around the flat part of the D-ring and then just pinch the short edges together and grab a clip and just clip them together like that. Do the same with the other one. Okay, go ahead and put these to the side while we prep our bag strap. Grab one end of your crossbody strap and your slider. Take your crossbody strap and push it up and over that middle bar of your slider. And now you can let this overhang anywhere from an inch to one and a half inches, whatever you're comfortable with. Remember, we're gonna be sewing very close to the slider, which gets kind of tricky to sew next to it without actually hitting it. So I like to give myself just a little over an inch, about one, about one and a quarter inches overhang. Now we're gonna take these three units to the sewing machine. For our D-rings, about an eighth of an inch from the raw edge, we're just going to base stitch. So this can be a three millimeter stitch. For our slider on our strap, we're gonna do one stitch that's as close to the slider as we can get it using our zipper foot. 
I like to do one stitch going across by the slider and then another stitch going over this top stitching right here on the edge of my strap. You are more than welcome to make an X here for durability or to add some rivets or to just sew a rectangle, whatever you want. But at the bare minimum, you're gonna to need to do one line right next to the slider, back stitching at the beginning and the end, and another line holding down the end of the strap, again, back stitching well. All right, you can go ahead and take your D-rings and put those to the side. We'll be attaching those in just a minute. Since I have a rivet press, I might as well use it. So if you wanna use a rivet press here, all you have to do is mark a dot in the center of your rectangle. I have the die on my rivet press that's for pressing holes. And all I'm gonna do is line up my rivet press so that when I push down, it'll go right over that dot. All right, you see now we have this beautiful hole here. I have these nine millimeter rivets. I got these from Emmeline Bags. And I'm going to grab two pieces, one with the short post and one with the long post. I'm going to change the die on my rivet press. So I'm going to take out the hole punch die. And I'm gonna use the 10 millimeter rivet die. So you just plop one in like that. For the other one, and just screw it in on the top. As you can see, mine's from Cam Snaps. I'll have links for all the things I'm using down in the description. So if you're interested in purchasing this, you can find it there. So I just take the rivet with the long post and push that up through the bottom. Take the short one over that. It should snap together just like this. It should stay together pretty well. And then all you have to do is lay it in the little bowl of the rivet press push down on it and you'll feel it kind of pop. And there you go, a beautiful little rivet. This is totally optional. It's just for fun. I have this, I might as well use it. If you've been thinking about investing in a rivet press and you make a lot of bags, I would suggest getting one. They are fun to use. Okay, so while we're here, let's go ahead and just finish up our crossbody strap. So take your strap so that you have the bottom of the strap, which has this fold over right here, that right side up and then just follow along the strap. We're trying to keep it straight. Grab one of your swivel hooks and lay it so that the swivel hook is pointing down and then pull the strap just like this. What you want is to take the unattached edge and be able to lay it over the folded section just like this. And when you pull it straight, your swivel hook is on the opposite end just like that, you see? And that's how you know your swivel hook is right. Now take that unattached end and push that over the center of your slider bar and over to the other side. So this is what you have. You have your swivel on one end, which is just held in place by attached to the strap. You have your slider in the middle, and then you have this open end over here. With the slider side up, grab your other swivel hook, and attach the swivel so that it's swivel side up and fold down that edge underneath. So once again, you should see the slider side is up, the swivel's pointing out on the bottom. We consider this kind of the raw bottom. Again, anywhere between one to one and a half inches, pull that strap over that swivel. We don't have to double fold or anything here because we already did that when we prepared the strap. Grab a couple clips. And once again, I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew right up against this swivel using my zipper foot. And I'm going to sew over this top stitching right here. And then I'll add a rivet to this. All right, your strap should be completely sewn together now. Just once again, let's just go ahead and add a rivet for fun. I'm just taking a pen and eyeballing where the center of this is. All right, I've got my hole. Just change this out. So once again, I've got two rivets, one with a long post, one with a short little opening. I don't think it really matters which way you put these in. I just always put the long post in on the bottom and then the short part on top. And then press down. And there we go, beautiful, beautiful strap. I'm only adding the rivets because this bag, we're trying to make a little bit more professional looking. 
So now that your strap is done, go ahead and put this to the side. I know that's a lot of work in the very beginning, but you're gonna be happy you don't have to do that in the end. So now let's make the phone pocket for the bag. Like I said, I adjusted the length of this to seven inches. So the width is the same, but the length is going to be seven inches. I find that this just is better for the bigger phones. So take both of your phone pocket pieces, which is pattern piece number seven and lay them right sides together. And then just pin or clip all the edges. You can see I did not alter the size of the featherweight interfacing on the back of this. So it's a little bit smaller than it needs to be. You could definitely add some length to this to make it bigger, but I find that it's totally fine leaving it this size. All right, on the bottom, you're gonna wanna leave a three inch opening. There you go. And now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along all the clipped sides at a quarter inch seam allowance, making sure we leave this opening here unsewn. Make sure you backstitch well at both of these marks. All right, once you have this sewn, go ahead and just trim down the corners, making sure you're not cutting any of your stitches. This will just allow you to have nice straight corners in the finished pocket. And then turn your pocket right side out. I like to use this tool called the purple thing to poke out those corners. Now pull the top opening and fold that down so that we have it nice and clean and no raw edges showing. Grab your iron and just press this down so it's nice and flat. Okay, now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're just gonna top stitch along this open edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Go along the entire top of your pocket. So if you're using a directional print and your top stitching actually is on the bottom of the pocket, you're gonna wanna go back to the sewing machine and just top stitch along the top as well. Keeping it top stitched at the top of the pocket prevents your pocket from warping in any way. If you're not using a directional print, then just go ahead and switch this around and we're gonna say that that bottom is now our top. Now, if you have a label for your bag, I like to add it to this pocket here. You can definitely add it to the exterior of the bag wherever you want. I get my labels from inked papers on Etsy. I have a link to their Etsy shop down in the description. I also have a coupon code for you for a discount. So I'm just gonna take this to the sewing machine and I just sew an eighth of an inch around the entire tag through both layers for my bag label. All right, here we go. We can now attach the pocket to our bag. Grab one of your lining pieces, pattern piece number five. You can go ahead and fold this together in half along that shorter edge just to find the midpoint. And then I'm gonna use my marker here and just mark a line in the seam allowance. And now for the pocket, I'll do the same thing, except instead of marking it with the pen, I'm going to grab a pin and I'm just going to put a pin in that center spot, just like this. So now you wanna add this pocket so that it's about two inches down from the top. Because we lengthened our pocket, we have to make this distance a little bit shorter than what it says in the pattern. So what I do is I'm lining up my six inch ruler mark with that marked spot on the center of my lining panel and just going two inches down. And then I line up my pin with that six inch mark. And that's how I know it's centered. Now for me, I'm a little bit close down here with my pocket. I might wanna raise this up just a little bit. So let's take this to one and a half inches instead. And this is what this is what I do when I modify a pattern. I just kind of eyeball it. I think that's a little bit better. So we're gonna do one and a half inches down from the top. If you're using cold cotton, you can go ahead and grab some pins and just pin this to the lining panel. So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch about an eighth of an inch all the way around the three sides of the pocket, leaving this top edge open. All right, your pocket should now be attached. You can go ahead and set this to the side. Okay, so now we're gonna work on that front zipper pocket. Before we get started, let's go ahead and make our circle on our outer pocket. So with your pattern piece number one and your 
fabric right side up. Take your pattern piece and line it up over your rectangle. And then use any sort of a marker or a pen and trace that circle. Now you should have cut that circle out of your pattern piece. So just do your best and go around in there and just trace that circle. We're going to cut this out later, but we want the circle trace now. There we go. Now, if you're not using this as a dog walking bag, just totally skip this step. You don't even need to trace that circle. So grab pattern piece number two, which is a lining fabric and lay it right side up so that the longer edge of the rectangle is going horizontally. Grab your zipper and lay it right side up with the zipper pull on the right side and just line it up with that fabric. It should be longer than your fabric. Go ahead and clip these together. Now you are more than welcome to go to the sewing machine and base stitch this on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, but I'm not going to do that today. We're going to do both of the stitching steps at once with the other piece of fabric. So grab your pattern piece number one with your circle and lay this right side down. Now the circle should be towards the bottom and the long edge should go up against the zipper. So it should be just like this. Don't lay it so that that circle is on the top left. It needs to be down on the bottom right. Line it up with the edges of your lining piece and just include it in your clips or your pins along that zipper. If you're struggling here, just grab a few more clips. The more clips you use, the easier this will be. There we go. We should have it all lined up along the top edge of our zipper. Now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along this pinned edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you're using your zipper foot. Once you have these sewn together, we can go ahead and press our panels so that they're wrong sides together and away from the zipper. Just press along the top first and then turn the whole thing out, making sure you line up all of the edges. It should all line up just nicely. And then go ahead and press along that zipper to get it nice and flat. Now we're gonna take this back to the sewing machine and sew along this edge right by the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have that top stitch, go ahead and set that to the side. Grab pattern piece number five and lay it right side up. Hey guys, future Jess here. So at this point in the video, I actually used the wrong pattern piece. Oh, I know, super, super tutorial fail. You're supposed to be using pattern piece number three right here to attach the zipper. I used pattern piece number five, which is not right. Don't worry, in a few more minutes, I'm gonna show you that I realized the problem and how to fix it. But if you're watching this video and making the bag, just make sure use pattern piece number three right here, not number five. Don't make the same mistake that I did. All right, future Jess is out. Bye. So that the shorter edge of the rectangle is at the top, grab your unit that's attached to the zipper and lay this right side up on top of pattern piece number five. Make sure you're lining up the sides of your panels and the top of the zipper that's not sewn onto anything should line up with the top of that back lining panel piece. Go ahead and clip these together. Now grab pattern piece number four, which is the top front of your pocket, and lay this right side down, lined up with your panels along that top zipper edge, and just include it in your clips. All right, now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have this sewn together, go ahead and press that top panel piece number four up, but leave that pattern piece number three, the larger rectangle, down. So we're only pressing the short piece up. Okay, and now we can top stitch along this other edge of our zipper. Just remember when you're top stitching, this back piece stays down. Don't lift it up and away from the other units. It's going to be top stitched down against the zipper. All right, once we have this all sewn under the zipper, let's go ahead and cut out this hole. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you flip this back lining piece out of the way. We only want the top lining piece for the zipper pocket and the bottom lining piece. That's it, everything else has to go out of the way. If you're using quilt cotton, you can go ahead and just pin around this circle through both layers of fabric to make sure nothing shifts around 
gets too weird. Now to get this started, I'm going to grab my seam ripper and I'm just going to seam rip through the center of my circle. And you can see I went through the top layer and the lining layer. Now I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to use my scissors to cut out this circle and just go slow. Just cut on the line that you marked all the way around. There you go. You can go ahead and throw away that circle. Okay, now you have this nice empty spot here. You can go ahead and leave your pins in if you want to. So grab your grommet pieces and you have a raised edge and a spiky edge. Take your raised edge and lay it underneath your fabric so that it just pokes through that hole just like that. Using your spiked edge, lay that down over that grommet and you can just push these together and they should snap into place just like that. If you're using quill cotton like I am, this should be very easy. It should just snap together neatly like that. When I was using the vinyl, it did not snap together neatly, but I grabbed a rubber mallet from my garage and I gave it one good hard bang and it did not break the plastic and it kept it together through the vinyl. So you can use these plastic grommets with vinyl. All right, you can go ahead and remove these pins from around the grommet if you still have them there. Go ahead and fold everything back down that is an adorable little pocket right there. So to be fully transparent, I just realized I used the wrong piece on the bottom of the zipper. I bet a few of you guys noticed that while I was sewing. You were screaming at your screens. So I'm going to unpick this piece. This piece is number five. I needed number three here. But I just want to show you that if this happens to you, just, just unpick your stitching. This isn't that big of a deal. Okay, so I'm just going to very quickly remedy this. Grab your pattern piece number three, which is the one that's supposed to be on here. And I'm gonna lay pattern piece number three right side up with the longer edge along the top. I'm going to lay the exterior of my grommet pocket right side up over that, lining up these edges nicely and lining it up with the top of the fabric and the zipper. I'm just gonna clip these together. Now I'll grab the top front piece of the pocket and lay that right side down, line it up with the vertical edges and include it in those clips. All right, now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and sew this down at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, once you have this sewn on, you're gonna just press this up away from the zipper, but again, leaving that lining panel that we just sewed with it down. So we're only pressing the top front pocket away from the zipper. Now let's go back to the sewing machine and top stitch along this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Again, we're top stitching it with the back panel down. So here we are, we have our zipper for the front pocket all ready to go. Before we trim off these zipper sides, Let's go to the sewing machine and just about within one eighth of an inch from the sides of our fabric, sew a couple times over the zipper on both sides, just to make sure while we're working with this, if we accidentally move our zipper pull, we don't fly it off the side and have to try to figure out how to reinstall that. Okay, once you have the ends of your zipper secured, we can go ahead and trim down our zipper tape so that it just meets the edge of our fabric. There we go. All right, so let's work on the treat pocket, which is just the outer slip pocket. Grab your pattern piece number six and lay it right side up on the table with the shorter edge up top. Now take your front pocket piece that we've been working with and we're just gonna lay this right side down, lining up the top edges together. And then go ahead and clip these along that top edge. Now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have these sewn together, go ahead and pull them back so that they are wrong sides together. And you can just press along the seam to help with that. Press it once. So once you have the seam pressed nicely, we can go ahead and go back to the sewing machine and top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, here's where you should be. We have the zipper installed. We have this adorable little treat pocket all ready to go front and back. Now what you can do is just go ahead and clip along the sides 
of your front pocket just to kind of get everything lined up. And if you notice you have any big discrepancy along the bottom here, you can trim it a little bit. I'm just gonna trim down the front of the pocket. Okay, so now grab one of your outer fabric number five pieces. So for me, I have the Decoville light on this and lay it right side up, take your pocket and lay it right side up over it, lining up the side and the bottom. So just adjust it as necessary to get it all lined up and then just clip all of this together. Okay, now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and just baste these together at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, now we have this basted together. Grab your D-ring holders, and we're gonna go ahead and baste these on as well. So these should be three quarters of an inch from the top, or I like to just go about a quarter of an inch from the top of this pocket here, just like that. Okay, and now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna baste these on. You might find it easier to use a zipper foot so you can get a little bit closer. We're basing it on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, let's prep the zipper for the top of the bag. So these steps are not in the pattern because I'm doing my zipper a little bit different. Grab your zipper tabs if you choose to do this, which are just two pieces of outer fabric, which are two inches by two inches. They're not interfaced and grab your zipper. First, we're gonna prep the zipper tabs. Go ahead and fold them wrong sides together, edge to edge, and press along that seam. Do the same for the other. Open up that zipper tab and take both of the raw edges that are parallel to that press and lay them up against that pressed midpoint. And press this whole unit. Do the same for the other zipper tab. Okay, and now you can just fold them so that the folded edges come together and clip. Do the same with the other one. All right, now grab your zipper. And first thing we're gonna do is cut off this stopper on the end of the zipper, just like that. We don't need that. Just make sure it's a nice straight cut. Grab one of your zipper tabs so that the two folded edges are pointing towards the zipper and just kind of like nom nom it. Have that zipper tab bite over that zipper, clip it back in place. Now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along the zipper tab at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So once you have that zipper tab sewn on, now we're just going to measure five and three quarter inches from the edge of our zipper tab over on the zipper. We want a five and three quarter inch opening here. Once you have that, go ahead and draw a line on your zipper tape. Now make sure you pull the zipper between that line and your other zipper tab. And we're just gonna cut our zipper tape on that line. Pinch together those open ends and grab your remaining zipper tab and just feed the edge of your zipper into the opening of your zipper tab. And you can just clip this in place like that. There you go. So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along the edge of the zipper tab at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have your zipper tabs attached, you can trim down the edge of your zipper tab so that it's the same width as your zipper tape. And your zipper with the tab should be about six and a half inches long. So grab your main lining piece, which is pattern piece number five, without the pocket, right side up, and the short side up top. You can go ahead and fold this in half and mark the midpoint along that top seam. And we're gonna do the same thing with our zipper. Take your zipper and fold it in half. We're trying to find the midpoints. So just mark in the seam allowance the midpoints. So lay your zipper right side up with the zipper pull on the right side and line up your marked midpoints and then clip together. Now grab your outer panel with the grommet and lay that right side down lining it up along that top edge. You might have to lift this up and work with it since those D-rings are kind of in the way here. That's okay. Make sure your D-rings are tucked in between the panels. 
And I like to move my zipper pull so that it's in the middle so that it's easier for me to move while I'm sewing. All right, so let's go to the sewing machine and sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, once you have these sewn together, you can go ahead and press along the seam by the zipper and we're just going to press our panels, our lining panel and our outer panel, wrong sides together, and then press right by the zipper. There you go. Now we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch along this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now grab your lining unit with the cell phone pocket and the cell phone pocket opening up top and lay this right side up. Grab your unit with the zipper and lay that right side up and just center it on that lining panel. So the vertical edges should line up neatly. Go ahead and clip the zipper to that lining panel. Grab your last exterior piece and lay that right side down, lining it up with that clipped edge and just go ahead and add it to the clips. Now we can go to the sewing machine and sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. So once you have those sewn together, you can go ahead and pull them wrong sides together and go ahead and press along that seam by the zipper. Now we can take this to the sewing machine and just top stitch along that edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Before we sew this together, go ahead and open up your zipper at least halfway. Do that to all of your zippers. Now take your outer panels and fold them right sides together and fold your lining panels right sides together. Push your zipper towards the lining side. And then I like to just clip the seams by the zipper first. Again, pushing that zipper tab towards the lining side. The goal here is that we won't actually sew on that zipper tab, but we still wanna get it out of the way. And then just go along the lining panels and the outer panels, clipping right sides together along the edges. On the bottom of your lining panel, make sure you leave about a four or five inch opening for turning. If you're using heavier fabric, leave it closer to five inches. If you're using just quilt cotton and not a lot of interfacing, I would do four inches. I'm gonna do a five inch opening down here since I have that Decoville light in there. So now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along all of the clipped edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. We're going to leave this opening in the lining panel unsewn Make sure you backstitch really well at each of these marks because we will be turning this bag through this opening. Also, just double check that your zippers are unzipped at least two thirds of the way. All right, as you saw, we backstitched really well over these D-ring straps. We don't want these ripping at any point. So now we're gonna trim this down a little bit and sew one more time around the exterior just to make sure we don't have any pulling on our seams. So first we're gonna cut down all of our corners, just like this. She suggests to cut off the corners of the exterior and then also cut a couple little diagonal cuts into the seam. This is just to help you have more of a rectangle shape and less of a rounded shape in the end, especially if you're using thicker fabric. And then cut down the corners of the lining. So to help reduce the bulk of the exterior, we actually wanna trim down the material that's between our two exterior pieces of fabric. So this would be the material that goes with that front pocket. In order to do that, we need to remove the basting stitches. Now, these are not the stitches you just made at the sewing machine. These are those really big 
six millimeter basting stitches that we use to put down the sides of that front pocket. You should be able to just go along and remove them. Remember they were about an eighth of an inch from the side. Well, you'll only see them on one side because we only basted them to one of the outer panels. So do your best to remove those basting stitches from both sides. So now open up your seam so that you can pull down your two exterior pieces of fabric. So for me, it's these cream colored pieces of fabric. And what we wanna do is trim down the fabric in between it. So the fabric from our pocket. Just do your best to go along this trimming down that inner fabric without cutting the exterior panels. Now you don't have to do this. This really just provides a more polished finish, but it's not going to take anything away from the bag if you don't do this step. Okay, do the same for the other side. Do the same thing on the bottom of the exterior pieces, trimming down that center fabric. All right, once you have that trimmed down, we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and we're just gonna go over the exterior part of our bag one more time. But this time we're gonna sew just an eighth of an inch towards the seam away from our previous stitches. This is just to reinforce that stitching along the exterior part of the bag. we have it all sewn together let's go ahead and pull it out right side out through that opening in the lining depending on your material or your interfacing this can be fairly easy or fairly difficult I can tell you when I was using the vinyl and the waterproof canvas this was extremely difficult I had to enlist the help of my husband because my hands were in a lot of pain but when I used just quill cotton it was much easier. I would say right now using this Decoville light, it's kind of in between right now. Right, so I like to pull the lining out and push my hand into the interior of the outer panel to help poke everything out. Just like before, if you have something to help you poke out those corners, like a purple thing, you can go ahead and use that here. Just be gentle. You don't want to accidentally rip all of your layers. Okay, once you have the bottom corners turned out, go ahead, if you use the zipper tabs, you want to come up and just kind of pop those up. If you didn't get them in the seam, they should just kind of poke up just like this. So they're nice and sticking out just a tiny bit on the edge. If you got them in the seam, don't worry about it. It's still, it's going to turn out very cute. All right, so before we press this, let's go ahead and close up this hole in the lining. You can go ahead and poke out those corners for the lining as well. And then stick your fingers in that hole for the lining. Give it a small tug. And it should help you fold down those edges. I never stress about closing up the lining and making sure this is perfectly straight because you never see it. But you can definitely go to the iron and iron this down at a quarter inch if you'd like. So now let's take this to the sewing machine and sew along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, once you have your lining closed up, you can go ahead and just push it into your bag. All right, and once it's all done, let's just give it one more press. You might notice if you use the Decoville light like I did, it does kind of crinkle up when you birth the bag, but giving it a press brings it all back into a nice, smooth, flat shape. All right, there we go. If you use the zipper tabs, you'll notice this is a nice rectangle on the top. If you didn't use the zipper tabs, you might notice there's a bit of a rounding with the zipper. That's normal, that's what's supposed to be there. Go ahead and grab your crossbody strap and just clip it on to your D-rings. And now your bag's complete. All right, are you ready to see the finished product? Oh, it's so cute. I love the like color blocking we did here. I think that that looks so cool. And that little polka dot peeking out right there. This is such a cute bag. And I can tell you that because we use that Decoville light here, it does have a firmness that say this bag doesn't have. This is, you know, a great, great bag to crinkle up. 
This bag is going to be a little bit more firm, have a little bit more structure. Honestly, I don't think it needs the Decoville light. I think using just the quilt cotton is perfect, especially if this is gonna be a bag you're traveling with a lot and you wanna be able to kind of like roll it up into your suitcase. This is a fantastic bag, but I mean, look at that. See, you can see if I hold this one by the corner, if I hold this one by the corner, how this one flops down, this one stays firm. Totally personal preference. I am so excited about this bag. Should we do a try on? Yeah, that is so cute, isn't it? I love how it just, like it's super slim. It doesn't stick out a lot. You just have your bare necessities in it. It's so, so cute. So this is a great pattern for those of you who have done like the grocery tote and maybe a reusable snack pouch, something like that, where you've worked with the zipper before, but you're not like going crazy with it yet. This is a fantastic pattern for you because there's just two basic zippers. They're not that difficult. It's all rectangles. We're doing something a little crazy here with this giant grommet, but it's really not that bad. You don't need any special tools to make this bag. I just love it. <laughs> I love good patterns. I mean, pattern writers, you guys are so talented at what you do. And I'm just, I'm so honored that I get to make videos for some of these. So thank you so much to Vivi for allowing me to film a tutorial for this bag. I'm so excited to film more tutorials for your bag patterns. Don't forget that if you go to her shop and download the pattern, use code Jess25 for 25% off your order. Stock up on patterns because we're going through all of them. They are adorable. If you have any questions from today's tutorial, please make sure you leave them down in the comment section down below. I hope you have a great rest of the week. Get out there and make something. Bye.